Welcome back to the second part of lecture one. Now we're going to talk about the velocity and acceleration of particles in fixed Cartesian coordinates. Before we talked about the derivatives of unit vectors and in particular when we can are able to write um, what the rotation, what the motion of these unit vectors might be in terms of something called omega. Whenever we write a time derivative of a unit vector, remember that the length The length, that, sorry, the length does not change. However, the direction of a unit vector can change. Remember, the, with the unit vector, the time derivative of a unit vector, the length can't change. It's always going to be, have a length of one, but its direction can change, and that's going to be given by omega cross e sub one, where this omega is some sort of rotation vector. So, as we found that when we do this, we found that e1 dot, for example, is equal to omega1 times 0 plus omega2 times a minus e hat 3 plus omega3 e hat 2. And so, so it's the difference between these two uh, about the unit vectors along the other two directions. That's whenever we are able to write what omega is in terms of components along e sub 1, e sub 2, and e sub 3. For typical coordinate systems, with the Cartesian rectangular coordinate system, we're able to write the position vector as x e hat x, y e hat y, plus z e hat z, and that's, as you might be used to, x i hat plus y j hat plus z k hat. For cylindrical coordinates, though, it's slightly more complicated. If we define, say, the old fixed coordinate system again, cap o, cap x, cap y, cap z, and from that fixed coordinate system we write uh, the angle phi, here is shown, we'll have a unit vector along the path of phi. Notice that as phi increases, this unit vector is along the increasing phi direction. So e sub phi, right, is along phi here. And then we have r. As r increases, that indicates the direction of e sub r. Notice again that we're using these defined in a manner as we choose. So e sub r is along the increasing r, e sub phi is along increasing phi. And then e sub z, well, that's a long increasing z. And this e sub lowercase z is for our cylindrical coordinate system here, where we have e sub r, e sub t, e sub z. Notice that this forms a right-handed coordinate system. If we say we have r, say theta or phi, either way, depends on your preferences and z. Okay, so e sub r across e sub, e sub theta or e sub t will be equal to e sub z. All right, and that's the way we might write this out. So it's a cylindrical coordinate system with a right-handed rule. The position vector of a particular point in defining the cylindrical coordinate systems is r e sub r plus z e sub z. What about the theta part, or the phi part. Why is there no e sub phi term? The reason is, is that if you look and notice that if we define an e sub phi term to, say we pick this particular point, and they say, all right, well, we'll define vector in, in cylindrical coordinate systems. E, the e sub r part will come out to here, and we'll have e sub v part come over to here, right? And then we'd be at that point. So we'd have something r e sub r plus something e sub v. But the problem of it is, is that we could rearrange, we could rotate this whole coordinate system in such a way that this is e sub r. And so, the e sub r points in this particular direction, we no longer need any e sub phi component. And you'll find that any point that we define in this space, we can always rotate, we can always change phi in such a way that the e sub r points directly at that point, and then if the point is up above it somehow, in along the z direction, then this part is the e sub z part. And so we'll add to that along the z direction. 
So that's why the position vector is r e sub r plus z e sub z alone. There is no e sub phi term. The velocity, therefore, is the derivative, time derivative of this, and that's r dot e sub r hat plus r e sub r hat dot plus z dot e sub r, and plus z e sub z dot. Notice that regardless of the orientation of the coordinate system, this particular unit vector never changes direction. So the time derivative of this vector is always equal to zero. So this part is equal to zero. On the other hand, notice that we can change phi in such a way that this direction will change with respect to time. So if the particle happens to be moving, then this actually will exist. This one doesn't exist, but this one does. Let's see what we can do about finding it. Remember, from a, just what we were talking about, the e sub r, e sub r hat dot, the time derivative of this unit vector, will just be omega cross unit vector. That's true for any unit vector. The time derivative of any unit vector is equal to omega cross the original unit vector. Problem then becomes, well, how do we find this omega? What does this omega turn out to be? Well, the, for the moment, let's leave it alone. We have the, the velocity vector then is r dot. This is equal to r dot e sub r plus r omega cross e sub r hat plus z e sub z hat. Okay, so v is r dot. Again, so we have our omega cross e sub r. And it's a matter of figuring out what omega is. And if we move the point p around, let's go back to the picture. If we move this point p around, then what happens to e sub r? About what axis does it rotate about? If you notice, the axis that this this rotates about is given by this line, this red line here, along that axis. So omega, omega is along this z direction, or in other words, along the e sub z direction. This is our omega. So no matter what we do, if we move the point P, it rotates about this axis. Because if we move it up and down, the E sub Z part takes care of the up and down motion, while the side to side motion is handled by the E sub phi. So it rotates about the Z axis. The translations of p with respect to o along r and z, and then the finite rotation about o measured by phi, and it turns out that this phi is the only rotation that is occurring. That's the point I'd like to make. So omega can really only depend on phi. Further, this phi is measured about the z-axis, so delta theta, like we were talking about before, remember with the b and then b prime stuff, this delta theta is in the direction of the z-axis. So this omega is given by phi dot e sub z. Remember this is angular velocity, the velocity of particle p as it's moving around. So that's phi dot e sub z. So, in other words, then this velocity vector is r dot, now that's r dot e sub r plus r times the quantity omega cross e sub r plus z dot e sub z, and that turns out to be r dot e sub r plus r theta dot e sub z cross e sub r, where we substitute it in for omega here and we're left with trying to figure out what e sub z cross e sub r is. And if we look back at our triad, r, phi, z, like we wrote on the, the screen before, then e sub z cross e sub r, well that's e sub phi and with a plus sign. So here it is, e sub phi with a plus sign, and then r phi dot. This you might have expected, but we've tried to show it from a much more general approach. Acceleration? Well, it's just the time derivative of the velocity or the second derivative of the of the position vector, and that's r double dot e sub r plus r dot e r dot. Notice all we're doing basically is distributing the dots. We we had before r dot e sub r, and we take the time derivative of this, and we end up with r double dot e sub r plus r dot e sub r dot plus r dot theta dot e sub theta, e sub r dot 
phi dot e sub t, sorry, plus r phi double dot e sub t, plus r phi dot e sub t dot, okay, and then we have plus z double dot e sub z, plus z dot e sub z dot. What's this quantity here? Remember that the direction of this doesn't change? That's zero. Well, at least we simplified it by one term. What about this term here? We found it on the previous page, didn't we? We don't know what this one is. We need to find it. But it shouldn't be much worse than this one. E sub r dot, remember, was omega cross e sub r, and that's phi dot e sub phi, as we used before. E sub phi dot is omega cross e sub phi, and this omega is the same omega as it is for everything, so for the cylindrical coordinate system. So that's phi dot e sub z crossed with e sub phi, and so that's minus phi dot e sub r, using our shortcut that we had before. Okay, And remember, we could also use e sub z dot equals omega across e sub z. Uh, we argued up here that, well, it doesn't change size or whatever as, as the point p moves around, but you could actually write it up this way. And it turns out that phi dot e sub z cross e sub z, well, of course, the unit vector cross with itself is equal to zero, and so naturally it's equal to zero. So at the end of the day, what we end up with is, is our acceleration in 3D using a cylindrical coordinate for a particular point, and it's given here. And if we group on the unit vectors e sub bar, e sub phi, e sub z, then we end up with this. And again, you might have seen this before, particularly ignoring this part, say, and it might be as you would expect, but what we've done is we've derived it using the, the ideas we've just shown from the earlier part of the lecture. Okay, well, now that we've done this, what about spherical coordinate systems? Spherical coordinates use a single radius r and two angles phi and theta. Position in p is given by r e sub r hat. So if we want to talk about the position of this point, then it's just given by this r vector e sub r. Why isn't there any e sub phi and e sub theta component? Well, that's because just exactly like for the cylindrical coordinates, we could rotate the direction of this unit vector to always point straight at whatever other point we pick. Say we pick point q over here. Then if we want to say what the definition of this point is in terms of unit vectors, all we need is e sub r. The reason is, is that we can point directly at this by just rotating this r vector so that it comes from the origin directly at this particular point, like so. And we just end up using a different theta and a different phi. So all we need to do for the position vector is to write r e sub r. Unfortunately, th while this is really simple, the rest of it gets to be more complicated. Okay, This explains why in more detailed terms of why we wouldn't need to worry about e sub theta or e sub phi. Okay. The velocity of p is just a time derivative of r, and you'll find that if you know the position vector, you know everything. All you need to remember is if you need to find the velocity vector for a particular point and that acceleration vector, always, always find position vector first, and then just take uh, one or two time derivatives. depends on what you need. So the velocity of point P is just the time derivative of the position vector R. The velocity there, V, is equal to R dot, so that's R dot E sub R plus R E sub R dot. Now we have to worry about this. Well, worry about this. Well, we know what it is. That's, it's omega cross E sub R. But again, we're left with the question about what's this omega vector? And that is always a trick. An increase in phi is the rotation about the z-axis while an increase in theta is a rotation about the e sub phi axis. So let's take a look at the picture and talk up, see about what we've got here. So we know that if we move point P, say along e sub r, from, from where it is now to say out here, all we're doing is we're just changing the length of the, of the position vector along e sub r. Well, that's not a rotation, that's just a translation. But on the other hand, if we move it, say, down this direction, such a way that the theta is increasing, like so, right? that's a rotation about this e sub phi axis. If you have a difficulty seeing this, then 
change the value of phi here so that this line is along a different direction, say along this direction, all right, and take a look at it again. So what I'm saying is, is that this theta is increasing, okay, that's a rotation of this point P, all right, down to here, say, and that rotation is occurring about E sub phi. So we have a theta dot, E sub phi, like that. That's one aspect of omega. And furthermore, I say the P point is moving around the z-axis, like so. That would be described by the increase in phi. So as phi increases, this point P would just rotate in a circle, circle about z, very much like the cylindrical coordinate system like we had before. In other words, what we'd have is we'd have phi dot E sub z with a capital Z, and in fact we can write we write it with a capital Z. Right, notice that before we had cylindrical coordinate system, we had a lowercase z, but we don't have that anymore. At some at some point, we're going to have to convert this in terms of to something in terms of E sub lowercase r, E sub lowercase c, and E sub lowercase theta. We'll talk about doing that here in a bit. But in any case, this omega. Okay, is the combination of these two vectors, theta dot e along e sub phi plus phi dot along e sub capital Z. So an increase in phi is a rotation about the z-axis, while an increase in theta is a rotation about the e sub phi axis. There's no other way to rotate p about the origin. So this is what our omega is. It's phi dot e sub cap z plus theta dot e sub, e sub phi. And so then this velocity vector ends up being r dot, which is equal to r dot e sub r plus r, times the quantity phi dot e sub z plus theta dot e sub phi, all of that cross product with e sub r. Now we can figure out what this is, this e sub phi cross e sub r, because remember we had r theta phi, if you looked at how our coordinate system was defined in the right-hand system. But what about z? It's not any one of these three, is it? It's actually outside of our orthogonal coordinate system. Right. So what about, what about e sub z cross e sub r? They're not in the same coordinate system directions, and they're most definitely not perpendicular to each other. Look back at the original picture. Right here it is. E sub z is most definitely not perpendicular to E sub r nor E sub, e sub theta. It might be per perpendicular to E sub phi, and in fact it really is. But the point is, is it's not perpendicular to E sub r and E sub theta. So if we look, we can say that we can recognize that E sub z, E sub r, and E sub theta are in the same plane. They all happen to be perpendicular to E sub phi we can define E sub z in terms of E sub r and E sub theta. So e sub, e sub z is up like this. E sub r is out like that, right? And then E sub theta is pointing downward like that. If you look at the picture back a couple of pages ago, you can see that. And in fact, the angle between these two vectors The angle between these two vectors here is actually theta. So if this angle is very small, then E sub r and E sub z will be pointing in the same direction. The cosine of the angle between these two directions okay, will be 1 whenever they're pointing in the same direction. So E sub z is equal to the cosine of theta E sub r minus the sine theta E sub theta. Notice that when theta is nearly 90 degrees, then E sub theta points in a direction nearly opposite E sub z. And that's why we would use a negative sign, theta, E sub theta. Okay, and you'll have to do this yourself regularly, so you might give this a practice.
to see if you can understand what's going on. It's important because this is one of the more important things that you actually can learn in this class. Okay, and again, a good check to see is to see what happens when the angle of angle of theta gets small. Theta goes to zero, and the two unit vector directions are are very close together. Then probably the angle is should be described with cosine theta. If as you go, if you move theta to to zero and they're actually perpendicular to each other, then you should use sine theta, right? So what this means is is that we're able to write e sub z is equal to cosine theta e sub r minus sine theta e sub theta. And so now we have e sub r and e sub theta, and then that's going to be crossed. Cro all of this is going to be cross product e sub r. And unlike before, when we were saying e sub z cross e sub r, we now have e sub r cross e sub r and e sub theta cross e sub r. They're all in the same coordinate system now. So we'll end up saying that omega is equal to phi dot cosine theta e sub r minus sine theta e sub theta plus theta dot e sub phi, where omega is equal to phi dot now. Then we, we regroup things in terms of the unit vectors. And when we write everything out, then we'll say, uh, the, the, this omega now is everything in, is in terms of the spherical coordinate system itself, right? E sub r, e sub theta, e sub phi, and when we write this out, it's r dot e sub r plus r times all of this crossed with e sub r. Remember, this is e sub r dot, and that's equal to r dot e sub r plus r phi dot cosine theta times quantity e sub r dot cross e sub r. That's going to be equal to zero. So this whole zero, so this whole thing is going to be, sorry equal to zero, so this whole thing is going to go out, minus r phi dot sine theta e sub theta cross e sub r plus r theta dot e sub theta cross e sub r. So in other words, the velocity is just given by this quantity here, r dot e sub r plus r phi dot sine theta e sub theta plus r theta dot e sub theta. Acceleration is another time derivative. Notice that we have r dot e sub r dot here again. It appears once more. And again, we're going to have another couple of unit vector derivatives here and here. And you can do the whole thing over again, right? Where we have already written what omega is. Omega always is the same thing for a particular coordinate system. And that's handy. It's given here. So we we'll use the, that system. We actually end up with the acceleration with the acceleration for a single point and the spherical coordinate system written as shown here. Quite a mess, isn't it? It's a lot worse than just knowing what the position vector is. But that's what it is in full 3D. Okay. If you write it in terms of e sub r, e sub theta, and e sub phi, you can group things out a little bit. And you might maybe have seen this before, uh, but we've shown you how actually to get it for yourself here. Okay. And this works for any orthogonal coordinate system. If somebody said to you that you, they needed to have um, and this type of der derivation for a uh, toroidal coordinate system, the, this method would work. Any kind of coordinate system, as long as, it, as long as it's orthogonal, the unit vectors are perpendicular to each other, this will work. 